Turn to the person next to you and say, you the man, you the man. <laughs> Some of the women, got to say that to the men, right? Praise God. Thank you, Gerald. Thank you, Parker. Thank you, Tommy and production team. What a, give, give it up for our production team. Thank you, Gerald. That's, a, that's an amazing team. Praise God. But you know, we've had some sponsors for the Super Bowl breakfast, and they just told me they're having the best steak with the eggs and everything else that you got going on. So this year, it's another level. So guys, get your tickets. Bring those neighbors and those friends. You know, they've got 50 autographed footballs for the children that the Lions will sign. It's a great time of um, making memories, um, but it's also a great time to build faith and community. So you'll want to be there. So guys, do us a favor. Go online. Get the tickets. Get it, get it finished so our team knows exactly what we got to work with. And, and uh, it's going to be a packed house, and we're excited for that. So thank you. Well, are you ready for the Word of God this morning? Are you ready for the Word? Amen. Look at the sun's out. It's a beautiful day. How many people were driving Friday evening in that snow? Anybody? Wow. Yeah, I was in Heartland, Michigan, going on the expressway. And I don't know how far you were driving but literally, I was just, just praying all the way on the expressway, literally, because it was just like you just barely were able to see in front of you. And uh, my wife was home praying, and, uh, but, you know, that's our faith walk. You know, we just go one step at a time. We just, just walk by faith and not by sight. So God, God got us home, and for all of you, I'm glad that the, the protective angels were out there, and the, our Lord's blood covers you and all those good things, so we're glad about that. Well, this year, the, the Lord's put a thought in my heart. I believe it's part of his, his heart that came on the inside of me, that 2024 is the year of advancing. 2024 is the year of advancing. And I looked up that word advance, and it means to move, in a, move forward in a purposeful way. So it's moving forward in a purposeful way, meaning God's intentional about your advancing and we partner with God intentionally to advance this year with him and what he has for us. Matter of fact, Matthew chapter 11, the scripture says, from the time John the Baptist began preaching unto now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing. So there's a, there's a, there's a forceful advance of faith for the church in these days. But it also means, advance means to make or cause to make progress. So I just declare this is the year that, that uh, God's going to help you make great progress in, in areas of your life, first of all, in your walk with Christ, and then that, that, that just blends right into your family, your relationships, your business, your job, your career, your schooling, all those areas of your life. See, God is advancing his kingdom this year. He's advancing your life, your family, your business, your ministry, our church. I believe that the Lord is, I heard on Friday, and I love this, the Lord has been smitten by the mitten. He loves Michigan. And we heard on Friday, I was at a pastor's gathering with a couple of our brothers, and um, the minister said that he believed that in Detroit, it would be in Ezekiel 47, where the river of God from the throne of God will flow into the streets of Detroit. And I love that. He even said that he believed 30 years of intercessory prayer was going to be manifested this year. That this was going to be a year of miracles and manifestation for our great city. And I like that. Um, you know, so I, I wanted you to see that. But more than anything else in the year of advancing, start right at the beginning. If we don't advance here, we don't advance, we don't advance the way God designed us to advance. Number one. We're going to advance in the presence of God. Can I hear a good amen? We're going to advance in his presence. Matter of fact, we hear the word reset. The word reset is, means set again. To reset is to set again. At the beginning of the year, we have a 21 days of prayer and fasting, which we're, we love to do every year. It's not an obligation. He's our accept, uh, obsession. But reset is literally, literally being set again in the presence of God. He's uh, resetting us, and we're intentionally 21 days saying, Lord, I don't want to start this year unless you're going with me, like Moses prayed. Lord, we're going to reset ourselves in you. And then uh, it also means to make new again. And I don't know any other place in the world that you could be made new but in the presence of God. Matter of fact, he even said in Isaiah 43, 
Don't remember the former things. Don't consider the things of old. For behold, I do a new thing. Even now it shall spring forth. So I love that this year, that our goal is set on the presence of God. We're going to advance because God is with us and we're with him. I had this thought as I was preparing this message, and it might not be the greatest English, but you get, you get, you'll get the message. The presence of God is what we got, and what we got is all we need in 2024. The presence of God is what we have, and what we have is all we need in 2024. It's God and his presence with us. So you could have man's presence, you're in people's presence all day long, but there's nothing like being walking with God day by day in his presence. Can I hear a good amen? Matter of fact, I heard this on Friday, that the number one assignment and target for 2024, your number one assignment, is practicing the presence of God. Practicing his presence. Can I hear a good AM? Good amen. Why? Because everything we need is found in the presence of God. Everything we need. Each one of us have been through different seasons. You might, each one of us are going through a season now. But I found healing and grace in one of my most traumatic seasons of my life in the presence of God. Have you ever been through a season where you felt like Humpty Dumpty all shattered? Something didn't go the way you thought or maybe you've had a hurt or a loss or, or things didn't go right relationally or, or maybe um, you were disillusioned by life and it fractured you. I, I went through a season like that when I was younger and I remember the Lord brought me back to my foundation. It's amazing at those times how you go back to the core, you back to your beginnings. Back to your beginnings and the greatest foundation is God. And in, that midst, in the midst of that season of my life, I found myself, I found myself little by little having the presence of God restore me, heal me and blow wind underneath the wings of my life and I began to move and soar and fly again. But I, but I began to move differently from that moment on. It was an experience God gave me. It was a tough trial, a tough season. But in the midst of that, the presence of God put me back together again. God established me afresh and anew. And I springboarded and I learned something. Some of my greatest times with God came out of that season. And I walk with God closer because of what I've received in that season. So I want to tell you, if you need healing, if you need comfort, if you need wisdom, if you need strength, it's all in the presence of God. It's all in his mighty presence that he wraps his big arms around you and said, I'll never leave you, never forsake you, that you might boldly say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. Now it's one thing of being in man's presence, but the presence of God, we walk by faith and not by sight. Pastor Andrew said, God is here. We don't know that physically per se, but it's, it's a reality that we know in our heart that's even deeper than what we can see with our physical eye. Remember what John, Jesus told Doubting Thomas when he resurrected from the grave and he appeared to the disciples? And Thomas said, unless I reach forth my fingers and put my fingers in his hands where the nails are and thrust my hand in his side where the spear was thrusted in him, he said, um, he said I won't believe until I, unless I see it with my own eyes. And Jesus, a couple of days later, a few days later, walked right through that building, right through the walls, and he appeared. And he said, Thomas, don't be, don't, don't, don't be doubtless. And Thomas said, he fell on his knees, and he said, my Lord and my God. And he said, come on, Thomas, put your fingers in my hands, the nail-scarred hands. Put your, thrust your hand in my side, and don't doubt, believe. And then he told Thomas this, you believe because you've seen. More blessed are those who believe that don't see. The Lord was giving us a principle. Knowing something spiritually in the core of your spirit is more real than you could have with your physical eye. Even, even Peter wrote that. Having not seen, we believe with joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's an inner work of grace that God brings into our inner man, the spirit of our inner man, that's more real than we could see tangibly with our physical eyes. Faith is of the heart. God is of, of the spirit. The Bible says God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It's something that God brings in you. We walk by faith and not by sight. 
So every day you begin to walk in the presence of God by acknowledging his promise and his word. I'll never leave you and never forsake you. God, I thank you that I practice your presence today. I know you're with me. I want your presence more than it. Look what, look what, listen to what David said. King David, the great warrior of Israel, the mighty King David, the greatest king of all Israel's kings, maybe the greatest king of all the world. Matter of fact, Jesus came through his lineage. Listen to this, Psalms 27, 4. Listen to what King David said, the mighty warrior. One thing I want from God, the thing I seek most of all, is the privilege of meditating in his temple, living in his presence every day of my life, delighting in the incomparable perfections of his glory. David said this, he said, there's something I desire more than anything else is to live and abide in God's presence. I've got men all around me, but there's nothing like the presence of the living God. I seek his presence. I want his presence above all the presence of any man. I seek the presence of God. And that's the power of 2024 of advancing this year. Why? Because David also said in Psalms 46, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams may glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fail. God will help her at the break of day. See, my friend, I don't know what 2024 holds. You don't know. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of natural distractions like there always is. Maybe more this year. Maybe more with the political arena, the economic arena, whatever arena it is. But I'm so glad he said, though the rivers quake, no matter what happens, though the mountains fall off into the sea, though the winds blow, where there's distractions to the left or to the right, circumstances to the left of the right, David says this, there is a river whose streams make glad joy, the city of God. God is in the midst of her. He will help her at the breaking of dawn. That river, my friend, he's speaking of God is in her, dwells in her, speaking of God lives in us by the Holy Spirit. And his streams, no matter what's happening on the outside, his river bring, brings gladness into our heart. It's stability and strength for the times. Whatever is happening in the world, that's why we're focused. His presence, there's fullness of joy. At his side, there's pleasures forevermore. No matter what's happening in our world, we've got inside information. We've got a God that cannot fail us. We've got a spirit, a river on the inside of us that will lead us and guide us, show us things to come. We have a righteousness that brings us stability in our day, security in our day, strength in our day. No matter what's happening on the outside, God's going to build your family. God's going to build his church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Can I give a good hand clap for somebody? Amen. 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 So today it's the presence of this year, this season, now, 21 days of prayer and fasting, this is the season to just advance in his presence. Take this 21 days especially. Say, God, I'm just gonna take special time with you. Special time with you. I wanna build that, my core, in your presence in a fresh way, a new way. Matter of fact, Jesus said this in Matthew chapter six, something about your private time with God, your private history with God when you pray. Don't be like the heathens do and they want to be known by everybody. Get into your closet. Shut the door. You and me, in your car, while you're washing your dishes, while you're going about the door, just practice the presence of God. What, I, what you do in secret, I will reward you openly. Don't fast so you can be seen by people, but fast unto me. Wash yourself. It'll look like you've been eating steak all week. And then God that sees you in secret will reward you. Do it unto me. Do it to cl come close to me and draw near into my presence. It's a, it's a very special thing. Last Sunday, when I walked into the building at 9 a.m., Amir, was, we, we had gone south to be with my children and my family, my grandchildren. Uh, we missed the, the Sunday, the, I think it was the 30th, 31st, the 31st. So we came back last Sunday. I walked in this road right here at 9 a.m., and I walked into this building, and I, I sensed palatable, the tangible presence of the living God here. 
And I mean, God's everywhere always, but there's something about the glory of God, the weightiness of God, where you know God is in the house. We want more and more of that in our personal life, in our corporate, our corporate church family. And man, I knew God was very intentional. And I knew what I perceived from that moment was, wow, God is coming. And this is what I, what I sensed. It was 21 days. God wants to meet with us like he met with Moses. He's going to meet with the church family because he wants to pour things in us. He wants to prepare us. He wants to establish us at the beginning of the year. Very intentional, God was for what's, what, what, what the year is going to entail. He doesn't want us to be distracted by all the things going on in the world. He wants to establish you and I in the power and the glory of his presence this year. Rock solid. Establish you in him. Establish us in him. So we're not rushing in this 21 days. We're here. If you're able to be here, we had a lot of people this week, Monday through Friday, from 6.30, 630 to 7.30 p.m. And it's been beautiful watching what God's done every, every day. If you can't, we do it live stream online, and it's a beautiful thing to be able to participate that way. The Bible talked about Moses meeting with God in Exodus 33 when he went into the tent of meetings, and um, God wanted to meet with him. He had the tent, and God would meet with Moses, and the cloud would come down. And I felt like that's what the Lord was saying. The cloud of my glory, my presence is with my people. Intentionally, I want to be with them. Intentionally, I want to strengthen them establish them, prepare them for the year that's ahead for them. See, see, our connection with him will prepare, enable, and help us to see all he's doing in 2024. Uh, I, I, love what, I love what Moses said. He was so intentional about this. Moses said, the Lord replied, my presence will go with you. He's talking about the promised land, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all other people on the face of the world? What distinguishes me and you from the world? It's the presence of God, the power of his presence. Moses wasn't just writing this. He was so sincere. He, matter of fact, if you see this chapter in the next chapter, over and over he said, Lord, if your presence, to, please, Lord, please, Lord, your presence has got to go with me. I know you're in me, but you're manifesting glory. I don't want to go unless you're going with me. I want you with me because I'm going to need your help. I need your power. I need your presence. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. He was so intentional, intentional about wanting God's presence in his life. Can I hear a good amen to that? See, Moses didn't just want, I'm going to give you five quick points here, but I'm laying a foundation. See, Moses just didn't want God's presence to help him. He wanted to know the God, of, the God who is the author of the presence that he comes. He wanted to know God. Matter of fact, he said in verse 18 of chapter Exodus 33, he said, Lord, you're going to come with me, but show me your glory. He said, Lord, I just don't want to know you and your power. I want to know you. Show me your glory. Show me who you are. I want to know you in 2020, 2024. And then chapter 34, the Lord says, the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the name of the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, here's his glory, the Lord, the Lord, uh, the compassionate and gracious God. He's slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to a thousand generations and forgiving wickedness and rebellion and sin. Aren't you gl glad that God came to, I'm a God that's full of mercy and compassion, loving kindness to a thousand generation. I'm one that cancels out sin, uh, forgiving wickedness and rebellion when people repent, when people turn to me. I will wipe out their transgressions. I will forgive their sin. I will judge their sin at the cross. I judged it and I forgive them. Their sins I don't remember anymore. Aren't you glad that Moses got to know a God like that and got close to God that way? But listen to what he said. He does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of their parents to the third and fourth generation. Now this is interesting. He said to those who don't come to Christ, their sin is still on their head. He says, I, when they turn to me, I give them, are you with me this morning? When they turn to me, my glory comes. My presence comes. My beauty comes. My, my spirit comes. My forgiveness comes. My cleansing. But if they're not, it's still on them. See, when my father was the first one in the Russo family to get born again, 
All that wickedness, all that rebellion, all that sin was blotted out. God began to show my father the mercy, the grace, the loving kindness, and our family trajectory from his generation on is turned into the blessing that Christ brings. But what if my dad would not have done that? What if he didn't turn to the Lord? Then it would have been a perpetual, uh, things would have been off in our family line. It would have been, it would have been continual addictions, continual uh, um, a violation of obedience, the curses of, of not having the blessing on us. and all. So if, if you're here today, my friend, God is a God that will wipe out your sin. You don't want your transgressions on you and, 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 the, and, the, and what comes from the transgression. You want to come and turn to God with your heart, repent and turn, and let the Lord, the merciful one, the gracious one, forgive and cleanse you. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Amen, 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 amen. So God, Moses' desire. See, God wants, and I want to just say this. Say this with me. God wants close proximity with me. Just say that. See, God wanted close proximity with this church. That's why he set up the sacrificial system in the Old Testament. That's why he set up the priesthood. That's why he had Moses build the tabernacle. If you're not, you're not with us, when Adam sinned man, and man was separated from God, but God got a man by the name of Moses and he said, I want you to build me a tabernacle because I want to get close to people. God wants to be close to people in 2024. He wants to be close to you. And he told Moses what to do. He told him how to build the, the, the ark and the, the, uh, the mercy seat, the atonement, the sacrifices. That God said, when I, when I see the blood on that ark where my presence is, under that ark was the law, was the judgments. And the, we all lawbreakers, so when God looked from his throne room, when he looks from his throne room, he's seen the law that had a penalty for each one of us. But on top of that, the, the ark of the covenant was an atonement, the mercy seat. And then they put the blood on top of that mercy seat. So every time God looked down from his throne, looked down, he wouldn't see judgment, he would see mercy because of the blood. And he says, there I will meet with you. When God sees blood applied to the church and to the, a young person, a child, a, a, a believer that turns the blood, there the Lord says, I will meet with you. I'm going to meet with that one when I see the blood. Um, my, my presence is there. I'm going to meet with that person. And I'm going to fellowship with that person. I'm going to come close to that person. Can I hear a good amen? God always wanted to be close to us. He wanted his presence to be close to you in 2024. He said, my presence is going to come into them so that I could live among them and I could be their God and they could be my people and I could talk to them. I could, I could be a part of their lives and them a part of me. Can I hear a good amen, church? Now, Hebrews chapter 10 talks about this beautiful thing. It says, so dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus, you can draw near to God, his presence. Advancing in the presence of God, you can go boldly into the most holy place where God is because of Christ's blood. By his death, Jesus opened up a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean and our bodies have been washed with pure water. What's the Lord saying to you today in 2024? He's saying, I want you to advance in my presence and my, my, blood, my blood was sprinkled on your heart, sprinkled on your conscience to make you alive. You are born again. You're, you're been, you've been born of my spirit. You've got my nature. You're my child. And he said, you could come right into the most holiest place, right into the very presence of God in 2024 because my sacrifice, when I brought my son, because I wanted to be close to you, I set up this sacrifice. He was willing to come to this earth to shed his blood so that you could walk right into my presence confidently, boldly through his blood, knowing you're forgiven, knowing your transgressions have been, has, has been erased from the east is from the west, as far as the east is from the west, so that you could come boldly, confidently, Find help in time of need. Find mercy for your failings. God wanted you to know that today as you go into 2020. Can somebody say amen this morning? Amen. 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 Praise God.
It's the presence of God. We have a baptism coming up in a little bit to all of our guest visitors. But to all of our guests today and everybody here, just imagine the one who created you, the one that made the heavens and the universe, wanted to be so close to you that he set up a plan. It's the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him wouldn't perish but have everlasting life. God didn't just want to take the wrath of your sin, forgive you and cleanse you of your sin. He did it so that he could be close to you. He comes in, you, he comes in us and that's what makes us holy. God's holy. When he comes inside of you through his blood, through his presence, you become holy. You become holy, set apart. Whatever he touches becomes holy, set apart, sanctified. And the Bible says he's perfected you through his blood. Hebrews 10, 14. He perfected those who are being made holy every day. What's he saying? Your position has been perfect through the blood of Jesus. You've got perfect right standing with God. You can come boldly into that presence, but your condition is being changed every day by the grace of the Holy Spirit. He's changing you from the outs inside out. Every day there's transformation in his presence, through the presence of his word, through the presence of fellowship. God's changing you from, the so I'm gonna give you five things that will enhance, advance you in the presence of God in 20, are you ready for the five things, church? Say, Pastor, I'm with you this morning. Five things right now in Jesus' name, Christians pray. Five things, number one, number one, practice. I'm gonna give, give you five Ps. Practice, precious, purify, praise, and pray again. Five keys to remaining and abiding Advancing in the presence of God. Number one is practice. The Bible says that Moses, 30, 33, 7, X, Moses practiced to take the tent of meetings set up from a distance from the camp. And everyone who wanted to make a request, inquire of the Lord, would go to the tent of meetings outside. Moses practiced the presence of God. It was his daily practice that he would go into the tent of meetings to meet with God. So make it your practice, your daily practice to walk with God, to talk with God. Um, take time in his word. Meditate, be with God, praise, put the music on. Have a set time in the morning throughout the day where you say, Lord, you could just claim scriptures like Hebrews 3. Lord, I thank you that you said you'll never leave me and never forsake me that I might boldly say you're my help. Thanks for walking with me today. You could claim scriptures like this, 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Thank you, Lord. I'm practicing your presence today. The greater one lives in me. He's greater than any problem, greater than any circumstance, and he's with me, and he's for me, and he's on my side. You could begin to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Say these scriptures over and over again. Practice his presence. What good is faith? Faith is, faith, if it's not believed in the heart and spoken out of your mouth, it's not Bible faith. Bible faith is not always saying what you see, it's saying what you believe. When you say what you see, you're going to have what you see. But what you say what you believe, you can begin having what God said belongs to you. I continue to say what I believe. I begin to say what the Bible says. That's what faith is. Amen. When I didn't see my children lining up the way I want, where I felt God wanted for my kids, I got scriptures out. Mainly, one of them was Acts 2.17. When the scripture says, In the last days I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Um, the first thing he said about the outpouring of your spirit was my children. And I began to claim, my Jonathan is prophesying, filled with the Holy Spirit, powerful. I say what God says about my kids, and that's what I believe, and that's what I pray, and that's what I'm thinking about. That's what I'm dwelling out. And Jonathan began to line up with those scriptures. And, and then your obedience to God. Your obedience to God. Somebody said this to Amir and I when our boys were young teenagers. And said this in a, in a meeting with a bunch of leaders in a conference with pastors and business leaders. And the man was preaching. He stopped in the middle of his preaching. He said, Dominic and Amir Russo. And I had my boys listening to this preacher. We had it on, had it, um, you know, just recorded for them to hear. And they said, if all you're giving was just for your children, the blessing that's coming on your children, it would have been worth it all. 
all your obedience to listen to God's voice and walk out on God's word. Can I hear a good amen? amen. That's what faith is, is it's not what I heard last year. Now we know that the Logos, the Bible, that says to love, to forgive, to do good, all those wonderful things. But the scripture says that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that's proceeding out of the mouth of God. Present tense. I want the present tense leading of the Holy Spirit now for 20. And I know what some of the things the Lord's telling me. I'm walking out on the word the Lord's given. Moses changed history because he got one word from God. Build me a boat because the flood's coming. And he walked in, in the honor of God, the fear of the Lord, respect of God. He obeyed that word to the saving of his family. Listen to me, parents. Listen, you want to hear God in his presence. You'll hear his voice directing you on your children and directing you what steps of faith you need to take and what word you're going to walk out on. I don't care what other people are doing, what other people are saying. The Lord might tell you something a little bit different and you're moving out on the word of God and God will confirm that word and bless your family, bless your children, bless your business. Don't be all naturally minded. Well, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't. What is God saying to you about that? What's the Holy, in his presence, what's he saying to you? What's he guiding you? What's he leading you to? And follow that leading. The Bible says the elders that are now in heaven, the women, the Sarahs, the Marys, the Hagars, the, the Moses, the Abrahams, the Davids. The Bible says they changed the world by hearing a word from God, getting a word from God, and moving out by faith on that word, they subdued the natural world. Through their spiritual word, they built the new world that God had them move into and do. Can I hear a good amen? So we wanna, we wanna, we wanna hear that. We wanna, we wanna practice his presence daily. We wanna, and by the way, Moses built the tent, it was a distance. It's not always gonna be convenient to want what God has for you this year. You gotta want him. Do you want him? See, you and I are as close to God as we want. The Bible says draw near to God. God's already made the move. He's come close. He's come to earth. He's come on the inside. So Dominic, it's up to you now. By your grace, Lord, I wanna come as close as I can. One of my mentors said, he said, he said, one of my great mentors said this one day. He said, I knew the day would come where the presence of God would be more real to me than the wife I was sleeping next to in my bed at night. I knew the day would come then the presence of God in me and near me and around me would be more real than the car I was driving. You know, so, so I, I don't know about you, but in 2024, the Lord's saying, I'm gonna advance you in my presence. You're gonna know my glory. You're gonna come near to me. I've made the way for you. I want to be close to you and you're gonna draw near to me. It's not always gonna be convenient. Whoever wants it. The Bible says, he put the tent of meetings a distance. You traveled here to get to church. You braved the cold weather. You got your kids, why? Because you said, I wanna get in the presence of God. I wanna hear the word of God. I wanna worship God with all my heart, my mind, my soul, my strength. I want God for 2024. Can I hear a good amen, somebody? Even David said, I will not present an offering to the Lord that doesn't cost me something. He said, I'm not going to get everything free. I want it to cost me a little sacrifice, an effort involved for me to touch God, to do the will of God, to do the work of God, to do what he's called us to do. Number two, not only, not only are we talking about practice, but precious. Precious. How many would agree that he, our God, is the most precious reality and promise a person could ever receive? He's the most precious the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have from God, you're not your own. You've been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. He's saying, my presence, is, this is precious. I am precious to you. How many people know precious things you, you, you endear to yourself? Like your children, when they got out of the house today, because they're precious, you put warm coats on them. You made sure they had gloves on. You showed the right socks on. And why? Why did you take all that care? You gave them, a, you gave them some type of a breakfast. Why? You did all that because they're, they're, they're precious. These are precious. 
And the Lord is precious. Pastor Andrew said at the first sermon, God is not common. He's not ordinary. To say that I would put my presence, he said, I put my presence in you so that I could be close to you. That you could be like Moses. You don't have to walk in 2024. God, I want you to come with me. I want your glory to abide with me. I want to hear your voice. I want to be strengthened by your presence. Precious to me. Precious to us. Can I hear a good amen? amen. Hebrews says this. Don't, we must give the most earnest heed. Don't let this drift from you. Don't, how are we going to escape if we neglect? He's saying, this is precious. Don't let this drift from you. His presence. Don't let, don't neglect his presence. He goes, because God is the one that makes the difference. He's the difference maker. Can I hear a good amen, somebody? Number three. So we've got, we've got number one, practice. Number two, we got precious. Number three, purify. Everybody say purify. Everybody say purify. Second Corinthians 7, 1. Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of the reverence of God. I'm going to ask the keyboard, uh, the music and the keyboard, if you come on out here for a moment. But listen to this. He said, he said, he said number three, purify. Purify yourself because of these things. Purify yourself. And then Hebrews talks about the blood of Jesus. Your conscience has been pure. Your temple has been pure. Now, when the Lord says he purified your conscience, this is a big thing because your conscience is the voice of your spirit. Your feelings, your senses are the voice of your body and your emotions and your will and your reasonings are the voice of your soul, your mind, your will and emotions. You know, purifying my conscience daily, voice of my, I want to hear God. I want my conscience to stay sensitive. So I want to purify myself daily, Lord, Keep me from sin, Lord. Keep me from the wrong words, looking at the wrong things, doing the wrong. Lord, Lord, keep me far from sin, Lord. Purify my mind when it goes off, my thoughts, my words, my actions. Come close, purify me, Lord. I want to keep my conscience clear before you. Lord, I want my, my spirit to be open to hear from you. I don't want nothing to hinder your voice and your leading in my life in 2024. I want my conscience to be purified. So I purify myself from any contamination. Can I hear an amen? In Jesus' name. And then we come out from among them. The Bible also says, come out from among them. Be separate. Come out from among things that might not, like the worldly things. Come out from among their thoughts, their ways, their actions. You don't want to yoke with that. So he says, come out from among them so I can be your God. So like you could be, he says, he says in 2 Corinthians, don't be bound together with unbelievers. Meaning, you could fellowship, you could be around unbelievers, but don't bind your life with their habits. What partnership is righteous, righteousness with lawlessness? What fellowship with the light and darkness? What harmony has Christ with Belial or the devil? What has a believer in common with an unbeliever? Don't practice their, press, their qualities. Come out. Or what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, therefore, come out from among the midst of that. Be separate, says the Lord. How many people know that God is jealous? He's a jealous lover. The Holy Spirit says his spirit yearns for him to be welcomed in you jealously. He wants our full attention. He wants our hearts. He's jealous. He's got a love relationship with you. He wants your attention, that he'd be welcome. And he gives us grace. The Bible says he gives us grace against, uh, he gives us the power and the grace of the Holy Spirit against all evil tendencies that would try to take us out of God's presence. Do you believe in the power of God to keep you from, to overcome evil tendencies that would try to distract you, trip you up? Come out from among them. The number four, he says, praise. So we're going to practice, we're going to call precious his presence, we're going to purify ourselves, but then we're going to move into praise. He inhabits the praises. Say this with me, I'm a praiser, Pastor, a praiser of God. Look at Ephesians 5, 18, it says, don't be drunk with wine because it will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, don't be drunk with the stimulant that is not going to produce the best results for you. If you keep at it, it could ruin your life. 
He said, but I got, I got the antidote. I got the original. I got the real. I don't have the phony. He says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now we're talking about the presence of God. The Spirit of God is God's presence in us. How do you stay filled with the Spirit? Here it is. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourself. He said, making music to the Lord in your hearts. He's saying, go around your day praising the Lord. Thank you. Then it says, give thanks to the Lord. Put the praise music on it. Begin to praise God. Thank God. You know, what you're full of will begin to come out of you. The other day, not too long ago, all of a sudden this song began to bubble up out of my spirit to my mind. I began to sing it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, God. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love you, Holy Spirit. Love you, Holy Spirit, God. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Praise you, Holy Spirit, God. I love you, Holy Spirit. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, God. His presence was there. And I was giving him praise. Thanking him and praising him. Be filled with the Spirit. Sing songs and praising Him, coming to church, putting praise in your home, praising Him, giving thanks to God for His goodness. Can I hear a good amen? amen? And last but not least, pray again. Pray again. Everybody say pray again. This is important as you come into this new year because I felt discouragement coming out of the old year was still hanging on some people. And I'm a pastor, but I'm also human. It could hit all of us. Life, circumstances, things didn't go the way you thought, a trial, a hurt, a loss. And I remember the scripture that Jesus said in Luke 18.1. Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not to turn coward, faint, lose heart, and give up. The Lord says, I want to encourage you. Sorry about the light here today. It's, it's with the, the snow and everything. It's, they're working the best they can with what we have going on right now. But he said, men ought always to pray. Don't quit. Don't faint. And then I gave the, th the thought for this point. Pray again. Pray again. Pray again. Don't let the devil shut your prayer up. Don't let what happened to you quiet your connection with God. Men ought always pray again. God's a present help. He's there. Then I began to think about David. The Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. David encouraged himself in the Lord. What are you saying, Pastor? I've studied the life of David at different times. And this man that was set apart for God, he was a musician, became David that took down Goliath as a young man. But you remember King Saul, King Saul got jealous when the women began to sing David, Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. And King Saul got so jealous and so insecure that he became a madman. And the only thing he wanted to do for over ten years was to destroy, take David's head off his shoulders. David would not touch the king. He had time he could have killed the king, but he would not touch God's anointed. And he ran and fleed from his life for over ten years in caves, in valleys, in wildernesses. Matter of fact, he even had to live. He lived near the Philistines, the enemies of Israel. Make a long story short, I'm going to make this real simple. He was going to go into battle with the, Israel, with the Philistines and make a long story short, they told him, get out, you're not going to battle with us, the Philistines. you got to go back home because you might allied with them when we're battling with them. Make a long story short, three-day journey, he goes back to Ziglag, where his wife is, his children, his family, his, his home, his possessions. And he gets back, the Amalekites invaded, they burned up all of his property, they stole his children, his wives, his families, and all, his, all the guys that were with him, his mighty men. And the Bible said they cried so much that they couldn't cry anymore. And the Bible said David was greatly distressed, greatly distressed because the people, his own soldiers, spoke of stoning David, their, their king and their warrior king. But they were so oppressed by their wives being taken, by all their houses being burned, and their possessions being taken. They, didn't, they were, And David, the Bible says, David could cry. He was so distressed. But, the, but David said, all of a sudden he collected himself. And he said, bring me the ephod. Give me my prayer shawl. I'm going to pray again. 
And the Bible said David began to encourage himself. I want to encourage some of you. Maybe your miracle didn't happen the way you were thought, but I, I felt like the Lord said, I'm going to encourage. Encouragement means God comes in you. Theos, God's, God's uh, presence brings courage. God inside you encourages, lifts you from the inside out by his spirit. And the Bible says David encouraged himself, strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And then he said, Lord, what should I do? Should I go after uh, my enemy and get my possessions back? And the Lord says, go pursue them and recover all. Go pursue them and recover all. Some of you, my friend, you might have been down by what's hit you and you might have thought you've got some things burned up. You might have think you've been hurt over here and go over there. But I want to encourage you. I've come to say, pray again. I'm saying, don't faint. Don't, please don't quit. Don't quit on your family. Don't quit on your home and your kids that you're believing for. I love this thing. David encouraged him and he recovered all. You're going to get all your child's health. You're going to get all their blessing on their lives. You're going to get all the, that God has for them in this year. You're going, to, you're going to get the fullness that God has in this year. You're going to go for it again. You're going to pray again. The scripture says in Hebrews 10, don't cast away your confidence in God. You have need of a little bit more endurance that after you've done the will of God, you'll receive the promise. Then he says, my righteous ones live by faith, but if any man draws back, my soul doesn't have pleasure. But you're not like those who draw back. You're those that press on to receive. In a little while, the righteous one will come. He'll come with the answer. He'll come with the answer. It might not come in the season you thought. And maybe your problem's a lot bigger than any problems I've ever had. But there's times I thought I waited for decades, 10, 20, 30 years to see God move in what I felt he put inside me. And as I got older, God began to say, now it's my season. Now it's my time. Things are moving. Waters are changing. Things are stirring. Don't let the enemy discourage you to draw back. Don't cast away your... Con last but not least, before I close, and the last thing you might need to do is Hebrews chapter 12. The Bible says you're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses that are in heaven today that went through, went, through, went through amazing feats to bring forth victory on earth. Some of them were martyred. Some went through this and some went through that, but they're surrounding you, cheering you on. Don't quit. And then it says, it says, it says you need to right now, in 2024, right at the beginning, he says, lay aside the weights. What are the weights? The weights of discouragement, disillusionment, disappointment. Lay aside the weight and the sin that would beset you. Is there any sins that are stumbling you up? Lay the sin aside and look unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of your faith, who for the joy that was set before him. What will give you joy? What gets this pastor up in the morning when I know my faithfulness might mean one more family will get closer to God? What gets me up in the morning to know that 500 children, by being faithful, by me staying at my post, these children are being touched and being changed? What gets you up in the morning that says, I've got to be faithful? I got to stand my post. I got a family watching me. I got kids that are watching me. I got children that are watching me. I'm going to know God's presence and walk who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Lay aside the shame of standing on that cross naked. Beated, beaten and battered naked the shame because I laid aside the shame because I had a work to do there was people's lives that were going to be changed because of what I did at the cross and he said this consider him when you feel like giving up and quitting consider the one who went the distance we celebrate this Sunday at church the reason you got out of your house braved the cold weather that you came to worship a king who died on the cross for you so that you could have eternal life that your judgment of sin was paid in the body of your Savior, that your hearts could be sprinkled with blood so His presence could come live inside of you. And he said, consider Him, that one, when you feel like fainting, quitting. He's got that job for you. He's got that new breakthrough. He's got things that He knows how to move some things. There was times in my ministry over 42 years, my ministry, I would go to the Lord and say, Lord, if you don't move this situation, I can't do what you've called me to do. Why am I even here if I can't move your vision? I know what you told me to do, Lord, but this is in the way. That is in the way. This is in the way. How am I going to get to the other side if you don't deal with this, Lord? 
And I said, Lord, you might as well give me my papers and I might, I might as well move on, Lord, because I'm not going to waste my time, Lord. you got a work for us to do. And I'm telling you, it was over time that God began to move things and shift things. And you could just say to the Lord, just like I said, Lord, if you don't move this heart, and if you don't move me, if you don't change some things, if you don't, if you don't move over here or move this wall or move this thought, or move this circumstance, or move this idea, Lord. I know where I'm going, but Lord, I'm, I'm not gonna cast my confidence, Lord. I'm trusting you to move some things so that I can move and promise more in 2024. Lord, I'm trusting you, I'm believing in you, and I'm looking to you. I just felt today the spirit of encouragement to encourage you, but not to just give you a little rah-rah. I mean, these are sobering moments. I don't know what's gonna happen in 24. But I know the one who holds the future. And I'm intentionally drawing near to God. Make your decision now what you're going to do. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If I've got to go to the distance to get to church every Sunday, my children, I know it's work, it's effort, but I want to keep my kids close to the glory. People wonder why our boys are different ones. We always try to bring them near the Holy Spirit, near God, in the presence of God, in my home, outside my home, drive them places, wherever I can get my family around the Holy Ghost. I want to obey the Lord so the blessing would come on my kids. I don't want natural blessings, just good kids. I want kids to be anointed by the power of God, on mission, on assignment, full of purpose, doing the will of God. And that's what God has for your family. And maybe your yes today is going to shift something. A blessing that God's promised. Did you know in David's worst day, when his house was being burned, when his family was being robbed, when his children, his wife were being taken, on a mountain, I believe it was the mountain of Gaboa, that Saul was battling the Philistines. And in that one day, his arch enemy, Saul, the one that tried to kill him, died that day. God was, he was being removed out of the earth, the thing that was coming against him. What if David would not have encouraged him in the Lord that day? David would not be the king of Israel that we know, where Jesus said, I will build my, my kingdom, my throne on David's, on David's throne, on, on David's lineage and throne. If David would not have done it, what's on the other side of your encouraging yourself today? What's on the other side of your obedience? What's on the other side, I'm going to pray again. What's on the other side of you saying, I'm not going to cast away my confidence? I'm going to believe God. I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord. I'm going to believe the promise and move forward in God. Father, we just praise you today for your people, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for the beautiful people of Oakland, Lord. The encouragement that you bring, Lord, to every heart, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, for advancing in your presence. Father, intentionally, as you're intentional, you told me I'm intentional with my people. I'm doing something special in my people. I'm coming to them. We're drawing near because you first drew near to us, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, through practicing, through preciousness of your presence, through purity, Father, through praise and through praying again, we're going to see change. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. If you're here this morning and you say, Pastor Dominic, it's my day. Dominic, I've been holding on to things. I've been, I've been doing it my way. And today's the day that I just want to I'm going to let some disappointments go. I'm going to let some, I'm going to let some mindsets go. And I want to look unto Jesus today. First of all, I want to know that I have salvation. I want to know that my sins are forgiven. And my friend, I just encourage you today. This is, just turn to him right now. Just turn to him with your heart. Turn to him with sincerity. Turn to God with all your heart. Repent. Turn from your way. Turn to his way. Matter of fact, who's that this morning saying, I'm turning to God right now in my life? Who wants to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? You may be, you've never done it before. You're here today. You say, Pastor Dominic, I've never asked Jesus Christ in my heart. I've been, I've been, I might have been to church, but I've never made him the Lord of my life. I've never turned from my way to his way, but today I'm turning to God. I'm giving him all my heart today. I want my sins forgiven. I want my name blotted in the Lamb's book of life. I want to know that I got eternal assurance that no matter what, I've got heaven as my home. I want God close to me and I want to be close to him. If that's you, slip your hand up right now, boldly, courageously. Who's that this morning? In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless you in front. God bless you. God bless you in front. Who else? Who else? Just lift it up real high so I can see you. God bless you, sir. Man, I see you, sister. Who else? Who else? Raise your hand up high so I can see it. Anybody else? Over here. God bless you, young lady. 
Anybody else on this side? You five or six people in the back there, you five or six, I want you to stand right where you're at right now in Jesus' name. And I want you to stand right where you are. Just stand where you are in Jesus' name. Just stand up. You have to be, a, you, many of you are standing. Just stand up where you are. I'll wait for you. Just stand where you are in Jesus' name. There you go. And then, then I want you to come out. Just tell the person next to you, excuse me, I'm going to go get blessed today. I'm coming down here with Pastor Don. Just come right, to, right out in front. I'm going to pray a blessing over you. Come right up front. I'm going to give you a blessing. Come on. A few of you right here. You're in the back. Come on, church. Let's clap for them. This is a big day. This is a miracle day. This is a big day. This is a big, powerful day. Big power. Come on, church. This is what we do. This is what we're not playing. This is what we do. We, we battle devils and we bring people in. We get their lives blessed in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Look at the children are coming. We love you, children. Amen. Every one of you, just lift your hands to heaven. Just lift your hands to heaven. And look up, look up, because God loves you. Look up. You don't have to be, look up, look up, because this is the day of blessing, not shame. And just say this from your heart. Say, dear God in heaven. Just say it out of your mouth. Say, dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for wanting to be close to me. Thank you for sending Jesus to die in my place, to pay for my sins with his precious blood. Jesus, I turn from my way. I want to do it your way. I give you my heart. Come inside my heart right now. Cleanse my heart of all sin and fill me with your holy presence. Lord, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for coming in me. I thank you for choosing me. I thank you for picking me. I thank you for wanting me. In Jesus' name, brother, come up a little bit closer right now. I'm going to bless you. Father, I bless my brother now in the Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you, Father. He's chosen. He's chosen, Lord. He's been handpicked by God, Lord. Bless him. Bless him, Holy Spirit. He's going to give you double for your trouble. He's going to turn your night into day. He's going to give you beauty for your ashes. He's going to restore. He's going to bless and blow you away. Let all, the other things are all crumbling around here and that. Let them all go because God said, I'm going to rebuild you. I'm going to do something new for you. Trust me. Trust me. I'm the greatest builder. I'm in a rebuilding project. I'm going to rebuild. I'm in a building project. And watch what I do in you. Watch what I do for you. I'm your God. I want to be close to you and I'm in you now. Watch what we will do together. Your life is blessed from here on out. Blessed. In Jesus' name, every one of you, come on up here right now. Father, I just bless my brother in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit. I bless my brother if this is a day right at the beginning. Your presence advancing. 2024, come on, sister. Father, we bless my sister with your holy presence. Blessed. Bless my sister right now with your holy presence. I call you blessed, my God. In Jesus' name, bless, 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 bless. Lord, thank you for mom. Bless mom. Holy Spirit, love you. She's bowed before you. Father, with the meekness of her heart, she humbles her heart before you. Raise her up, Lord. Bless her, Lord. You see her faith. You see her heart. Bless her and bless her children. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Let's worship God. Hold on up here. Stay up here for a minute. Let's praise Him. If you enjoyed today's message and you want more coming your way, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or our podcast. We'll notify you of great messages and great content we'd love to send you. Hey, I'd love to meet you in person at what, 9 a.m. service or 11 a.m. service. Have the best week of your life. We'll see you soon.